Hi, welcome back. This is uh, topic 323 as you can see and it's quite a bit of a tangent, a sidestep from where we've been going in this class. However, it does link to biodiversity. Uh, when we look at plate tectonics, as we see in this image, uh, shifting gears, it's, it's the movement of plates around our planet and you can imagine this is shifting habitats all over the place from the polar regions where it's cold to the tropical regions and when you move uh, large land masses you're also moving everything that's alive on those land masses into these regions so it does play a role in, in biodiversity it's at a much uh, larger geological scale so we're looking at millions of years of movement here as we go through so it, it feels like a bit of a shift from our discussion on uh, natural selection which we've been talking about and evolution um, but it's not that much of a shift it plays it goes hand in hand um, plate tectonics uh, deals with the theory of, of continental drift and as it goes the simplified version of this is that there's uh, seven to eight floating plates uh, around the planet and these are floating on uh, a liquid magma core um, and, or mantle sorry and that is essentially like floating plates on top of water and you can imagine them shifting around and bumping into each other and shifting and bumping if you put enough time and pressure into these things they shift and bump and push and sink and move around um, if you don't believe me and you've ever experienced an earthquake that's continental drift. Two plates are smashing up against each other and earth gives and you get this jolt and that's called an earthquake. Um, when we look at this in terms of biodiversity, a question that I've posed at the bottom of, of these notes, and you can pause these notes to copy them down if you'd like for your notebooks, um, is how is evolution linked to continental drift? So that's what we're focusing on here. Um, one key to trying to answer this is think about endemic species and what that means and then think about species in places like Madagascar in this picture we see lemurs um, those are endemic species and types of animals like kangaroos in uh, Australia why are those unique to these places and how come they aren't in other places the question can be answered when we think about continental drift and the shifting and movement of these places from this to this to this and we can see some isolation occurring with Madagascar right there and Australia um, so continental drift will play a big role in evolution in that sense I'm just going to skip forward here I'll put some link to these nice videos uh, in the descriptions below there's a few types uh, of movement that we need to know about so I'll scroll down, you can see my eyes there. There I am again. Um, when we think about the, the types of plate boundaries, uh, we can think about, we can categorize them in three types. So there's divergent, essentially they're pulling apart from each other, and a gap is created in the middle. We see that in the center of uh, the large oceans, the Pacific and the Atlantic. Um, convergent are when two plates slam into each other. Oftentimes, one will sink and one will rise, and you end up with things like the Himalaya Mountains. India is its own; uh, it's on its own plate, and it's slammed into uh, Asia, creating the Himalayan Mountains. And a transformation plate is when one plate is shifting uh, and going in the opposite direction as the other, and you can see that actually uh, in San Andreas Fault in California. Now the question arises, that one that the IB might like to throw your way is uh, why would divergent and convergent boundaries impact biodiversity more than this one over here? Um, I'll give you a second to think about that if you want to pause. I would suggest that these create geographical separations, whereas like huge mountains or massive gaps and oceans in between versus this moves land a little bit that way and this moves it a little bit this way you can still cross over and share the genetic information with other species on this side quite easily with a transformation whereas mountain ranges and oceans are a bit more difficult to to move back and forth around hey here i am again um 
at this point I would pause and I would go to to Google uh, Earth, if you have Google Earth, Google Maps, um, and get on and try to find these three types of boundaries. Here I've just taken a screenshot, for example, between Africa and South America, and you can start to see some boundaries right through here. And if you start scrolling around the, the planet, go to the Himalayas, look uh, around, look for the San Andreas Fault for a transformational boundary, and you can you can see the physical tearing of the earth and smashing of the earth. The Andes Mountains in South America are a great place to look. One plate is smashing underneath the other and the other is creating mountains. Um, so go have a look at it. It's really interesting to see for yourself and Google uh, provides us that context. I'll share a couple interesting um, videos on this. There's a, a couple TED Talks that are quite interesting that from the leaders uh, in these fields to, to share all their background, their research, and some interesting stuff about it. Um, looking at mass extinctions, this is another shift in gears. Uh, while we're talking about geological time frames, we'll just do a quick tangent and look at that. There have been five major mass extinctions that we know of, and it's argued that we are currently in the sixth extinction. It's called the Hellasine extinction. The data supports that. The data shows that we are going through a major extinction rate of uh, an enormous amount of species are being wiped out on this planet. And while we have known culprits earlier on in history, uh, like the meteor and the KT extinction that wiped out the dinosaurs, um, the known culprit now is guess what or who? Yes, us. So the sixth extinction, um, like I said, there's a lot of evidence and data to support this. Um, and we can spend a lot of time looking into this sixth extinction. I, I personally think this could be its own course um, to look at how humans are, are causing all this damage. Actually, it's going to be the next topic um, that we look at. So some interesting data, you can pause and take a peek at some of this. Uh, this just comes online in the sources in the corner there. But to end on, on a well positive note, depending on, on your outlook on this, uh, I'll share this TED Talk as well, and this is by Michael Archer, and it's looking at the idea of de-extinction, and this is a very uh, TOK place to end this lesson, because you could ask the question, does, does the knowledge that we, that we as a species have now, should that enable us to go back in time, and should we? Is that a good thing? He talks about de-extinction and thinks about some very positive aspects to that, bringing species back because we know so much about genetics. But other things have taken their place already and moved into all these niches and into all these areas. So by bringing things back, we're going to cause a lot of conflict um, in those spaces. And it's an interesting question he raises as well. Uh, is it our moral right to bring species back or do we need to really tread lightly when, when we talk about this? So we end there um, and I'll share the links to these other videos. Lots of interesting stuff in this topic and I flew through it so have a look at Cognitive for a lot more detail in, in this area. Okay.